AutoHotKey is one of the most powerful programs ever made. Yet by itself it doesn't do anything, it's useless. So how does this paradox of an application work? Well, the name of AutoHotKey is deceptive because it doesn't just do mouse and keyboard macros, it can also interact directly with programs to give the user enhanced control over their applications. You can even use AutoHotKey to make new, self-standing programs of your own. But I want to try to keep it simple for this tutorial. I'd like to show you how easy it is to automate your work and give you a basic means of controlling your applications using AutoHotKey. Okay, here's how it works. AutoHotKey functions are processed with nothing more than text files, so Notepad is all you need to make killer automation scripts. Just save your work with the AHK extension, and you have an AutoHotKey script ready to go. Before we get started, the single most important thing to know about is the command reference on the AutoHotKey website. There is no way in hell that I could memorize all of this stuff, so it's fortunate that the command reference is extremely well organized. Every single command listed here has a complete write-up on how to use it, along with examples. Say I want to have it so that when I press F5, it'll make my keyboard send the entire alphabet. Here's the code in just three lines. Let me break it down for you. When I press F5, send these keystrokes. Okay, you're finished. Stop what you're doing. This script is alphabet.ahk. By double-clicking on it, you get this H icon in the lower right of your screen. This tells you that the program is active. Now when I open up any text program and hit F5, it will send the entire alphabet as if I had pressed all of those keys on my keyboard. Let's keep editing this program by right-clicking on the H and selecting Edit. So I can make any key perform this function by just changing the entry at the top. The two colons here denote key activated code, and it's one of the most common usages for AutoHotKey. I should note that certain keys, such as space or enter, need to be typed in like this. Also, say you want a combination of keys to activate a script. Key combinations are denoted by symbols as shown on the screen here. So if I wanted Shift F5 to control this alphabet script, I'd just add the plus sign in front of it. Now you're not limited to just one line. You can put as much stuff as you want into a key press as your heart desires. In this script, when I press F5, it sends a sequence of keystrokes, pressing enter after every word. If you want to make the script a little bit more organized looking, you can use multiple send commands to achieve the exact same effect instead of lumping it all into one line. In summary, the send command by itself gives you a high level of automation capability and know that it's not limited to just your keyboard. You can even use a game controller to drive a function using AutoHotKey. One thing before we move on. What if you want a hotkey to only perform a certain action when a certain window is showing? Let's assume that I wanted this alphabet script to only work if I have Notepad open and active, and that otherwise I want the key to perform its normal function. You can use the if when active command to achieve this. Let's look at this new script. When I press F11, if the title of this window contains this text, run the code between these brackets. If the window's title does not contain this text, then run the code between these brackets. Brackets are commonly used to denote the start and end of if statements and similar functions. Now when I hit F11, how this script behaves will depend on whether I'm working with a notepad or not. Oh wait, hold on a second, we're not done yet. There's a big problem with this script. When we press F11 in a different window, this script triggers an infinite loop and does nothing. This is because the F11 key is remapped to run the script. The script, therefore, will just keep running itself if anything other than Notepad is open. In order to fix this, we have to place the dollar sign symbol in front of the hotkey. This makes it so that the hotkey will not get triggered if key presses are performed within scripting. And there we go. This script effectively makes the F11 key context sensitive to the program being used. 
The next part of my video is quite a bit more advanced and it's for those people who want to be able to directly manipulate applications either in the way that they work or implementing new ways to control them. I'll try to make my examples detailed just enough to get you started so that you can expand on the content that is covered here. To give you a preview of the kind of stuff that you can manipulate, let's take my paint program for example. Whenever I save an image and choose which file format that I'd like to save it as, I'm presented with an overly long drop-down list of file formats, and out of this huge list I only really use three of them. So in the past, every time I save something new or were looking to open a specific file type, I'd have to look through this list. It was a waste of time. So to remedy this problem, I created a simple script that allows me to use a combination of the shift key and my mouse wheel to cycle through the file types that I use most often. No more screwing around, no more wasted time. If something about a program annoys me, nine times out of 10, I have the power to change it. Okay, so the question that we're left with is, how does a person manipulate a program with auto hotkey? Windows Spy is the answer. Now I'm going to walk you through how I made the mouse wheel change the values in my Save As dialogs. And note that this is the process that I use for most Windows based controls and buttons. So this will work anywhere. When opening up Windows Spy, you notice that if you move the mouse around, it displays all the data that it can find related to what's under your mouse cursor. So when we go into the Save As dialog here, and move the mouse over the Save As Type drop-down menu, you'll see that the class NN value is Combo Box 2. The class NN value is what you use to reference a specific Windows control in your auto hotkey scripts. Let me guide you through the mouse wheel up function script that I've created. This first line defines a number for a variable called my variable that will be used in the script when you first open the auto hotkey program. When I move the mouse wheel up, if the variable called my variable is less than or equal to the number zero, run the code inside these two brackets. This line uses the control command, which manipulates controls in various ways depending on how it's used. This is documented in AutoHotKey's reference guide. In this case, I set the desired function to choose string since I'm dealing with a drop down menu, and the string that I'd like to choose contains the words Paint Shop Pro Image. Finally, I want to apply this action to Combo Box 2, which is the value given to us by Windows Spy. After that, I want to increment the variable's value by 1 and then make the script stop what it's doing. Now, the next time I move my mouse wheel up, my variable is equal to 1, so it's not less than or equal to 0, so this part of the script is going to get ignored as if it doesn't exist. Our variable is less than or equal to 1 now, so this section of the script is going to get executed, and the only difference that I made in this section is the text that gets chosen. So basically, every time you move the mouse wheel up, it moves to a different part of the script. When we get to the bottom of these if statements, instead of incrementing the variable's value, we instead set it to zero. Now when the script runs again, the first option will again get executed and it just loops through. Obviously, for Windows-specific code like this, you will want to utilize things like if when active. Note that the class NN property will not work for things such as web pages in your browser or for programs that use buttons and functions that are not Windows standard. And that's essentially how I make auto hotkey automate or simplify all of my tasks. What I've described here is just the tip of the iceberg and personally I use it to enhance every single program that I use. I can press the F keys in my Windows Explorer or any file dialogs to navigate to my most frequently used file folders. I don't waste my time navigating file trees anymore in any program. I've added Control shift click menus to my Paint program for quick access to frequent use commands. And I've also made many customizations to most of my applications to achieve control schemes that are simply not possible to do natively. Hopefully this tutorial has given you a small glimpse of the countless possibilities that exist when you add auto hotkey to your toolset. When used correctly, auto hotkey can not only save you years worth of time and frustration, 
but it can also greatly decrease the occurrence of repetitive stress injury and boost productivity no matter what applications you work with. So yeah, this is why I say AutoHotKey is every program's best friend. Use it, love it.